we have a repeating decimal and we need to prove that it's rational by rewriting it as a quotient of two integers. Let's call this strange number x. We're not going to get there right away. The first goal is just to eliminate the infinite repeating block. We may not get an integer. The first question that we need to ask ourselves is how long is the repeating block? Well, let's see, 7, 8, 2, 5, 7, the 8 does not repeat, but then 2, 5, 7, 2, 5, 7, 2, 5, 7. If we had to rewrite this number, we could write 0 0.78257. So the repeating block is three digits long. And that means that this technique will work if we multiply by a 10 power that moves the decimal point by three decimal places. If the magic word is three, as in three, three digits in the block, then put three, put that many zeros after the one, we get a thousand, that's the right number. So we're gonna multiply both sides of this equation by a thousand. So x will become a thousand x. And now, what happens to this number when we multiply it by a thousand? We're gonna write the answer aligned by the decimal point because the next step is gonna be a subtraction. But if we multiply this number by a thousand, that means we're gonna move the decimal point one, two, three decimal places then we get 782.5725725. So let's do that. 782.5725725. This method will only work if ignoring the finite beginning, the infinite tail, we have this alignment that there is a two above a two, a five above a five, a seven above a seven. And that's why thousand works because this seven has to move three decimal places to become this seven. And why is this useful? We're gonna use the number's badness against itself. We're gonna subtract the left-hand side from the left-hand side and the right-hand side from the right-hand side. This infinite tail disappears, and then we're left with the following subtraction. We can do it with the calculator or with hand, but just forget the stuff that completely cancels out, and there it is. So this is what you need to enter into your calculator. 782.57 minus 0 0.78. So we're in good shape. And here, when we subtract x from 1000x, we're gonna have 999x. Now notice what happened. We did not get an integer, but that's okay. As long as we got rid of the infinite repeating block, we're in good shape. This is just a terminating decimal. We have to solve for x. If we divide both sides by 999 right now, we will get a fraction, but the numerator is not an integer. There is an easy fix for that, again, a suitable 10 power. This time we have to ask, okay, how many decimals do I need to move this decimal point to the end? In this case, two, that means put two zeros after the one, so we're gonna multiply both sides of this equation by 100. So if we multiply the left-hand side by 100, we have 78,179, now it's an integer, and the price to pay for that is that we have to multiply the other side by 100 as well. So that's going to be 99,900. And now solve for x. x is 78179 divided by 99900. Also remember that we just have to prove that it's a rational number. That means produce two integers that their quotient is our number. We do not have to produce the best one. In other words, we do not have to reduce this uh, fraction to lowest terms. So don't worry about that. But as always, if you can check, you should. So let's see, what do we get if we enter this division? 78,179 divided by 99,900. And we get 0.7825725725. Now what's the three at the end? What's going on is that we are smarter than the calculator. The calculator does the following. It knows that the answer is 0 0.78257257725, and then it, round, it rounds 25 up to 30. Our answer is correct. The difference that we see is in how the calculator handles this infinite decimal. It just rounds. Okay, so just to recap, in this problem, we had to multiply by a suitable 10 power. The first multiplication depended on how long the repeating block is. The second depended on how many decimals do we need to move the decimal point from here to get to an integer. Thank you for watching.